Today, we explore a tragic and complex tale from the book of Genesis, Lot's daughters, and the origins of the Moabites and Ammonites. Our story begins in the infamous cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, cities known for their wickedness and eventual destruction by divine judgment. But within these cities lived a man named Lot, Abraham's nephew, who found himself caught in a whirlwind of divine intervention and human frailty. Lot, his wife, and their two daughters were spared from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Guided by angels, they fled to the small town of Zoar. However, tragedy struck when Lot's wife looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. This left Lot and his two daughters alone, seeking refuge in a cave in the mountains. In this remote cave, isolated from the rest of the world and fearing that they were the last survivors of humanity, Lot's daughters faced a desperate situation. They believed that in order to preserve their family line, they needed to take drastic measures. Our father is old, and there is no man around here to give us children, as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. In their desperation, Lot's daughters devised a plan to intoxicate their father with wine. Over two consecutive nights, each daughter lay with him and both became pregnant by their father. The elder daughter gave birth to a son named Moab, who would become the father of the Moabites. The younger daughter bore a son named Ben-Ami, who would become the father of the Ammonites. These two nations would play significant roles in the history of Israel, often as adversaries. The Moabites and Ammonites, born out of this tragic act, would go on to establish their own territories east of the Jordan River. Despite their origins, they grew into powerful nations that frequently conflicted with the Israelites. The story of Lot's daughters serves as a sobering reminder of the complexities of human nature and the far-reaching consequences of our actions. The Bible does not tell us Lot's reaction when he realized his daughters were pregnant. It leaves us to wonder about Lot's thoughts and feelings in the face of such a tragic and morally complex situation. The Moabites and Ammonites were two ancient Semitic peoples who lived in the region of the Near East, particularly in what is now modern-day Jordan. The Moabites were descendants of Moab, the son of Lot's elder daughter. The name Moab is traditionally understood to mean from father. The territory of Moab was mountainous, and the capital was Debon. The region was characterized by its plateau and fertile lands, making it suitable for agriculture and livestock. They were often in conflict with the Israelites. During the Israelites' journey to the Promised Land, the Moabite king Balak attempted to curse the Israelites by hiring the prophet Balaam, but Balaam blessed them instead. Numbers 22-24 The Moabites later oppressed the Israelites during the period of the judges until they were defeated by the judge Ehud. Despite the general enmity, there were periods of peace and even intermarriage. For instance, David found refuge for his parents in Moab when he was fleeing from Saul, 1 Samuel 22, 3-4. Later, David conquered Moab and made it a tributary state, 2 Samuel 8-2. Also, the story of Ruth, a Moabite woman who married an Israelite and became the great-grandmother of King David, demonstrates moments of integration and acceptance between the two peoples. There were also times when the Moabites and Ammonites joined forces against Israel, as seen in 2 Chronicles 20. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them others beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. They allied with others to attack Judah during the reign of King Jehoshaphat. The Moabites had their own distinct culture and religious practices. They worshipped Chemosh as their chief deity. Chemosh was associated with war and was believed to require periodic human sacrifices, particularly in times of crisis. The Moabite stone, or Meshastile, discovered in the 19th century, 
provides valuable insights into Moabite culture, language, and religion. It records the victories of King Mesha of Moab and his dedication to Chemosh. The Ammonites, on the other hand, were descendants of Ben-Ami, the son of Lot's younger daughter. Ben-Ami means son of my people. The Ammonites settled in the region east of the Jordan River with their capital at Rabah, modern-day Amman, Jordan. Their territory lay north of the Moabite lands. The land was less fertile than Moab. The Ammonites, like the Moabites, worshipped their own deities, with Milcom being their chief god. They had a strong, fortified capital and maintained a distinct cultural identity. The Ammonites had a reputation for being fierce warriors, and their society was organized around tribal and familial units. The Ammonites also had a complex relationship with the Israelites. They were frequently in conflict with Israel. They opposed the Israelites during their journey to the Promised Land and were involved in various wars and hostilities during the time of the Judges and the Monarchy. The Ammonite King Nahash besieged the Israelite town of Jabesh Gilead, but Saul defeated him, marking the beginning of Saul's kingship, 1 Samuel 11. Later, King David had conflicts with the Ammonites, particularly during the Ammonite-Syrian War, which resulted in the capture of Rabbah, 2 Samuel 11 to 12. Despite these conflicts, there were moments of cooperation and intermarriage. Solomon, for instance, had Ammonite wives, and one of his most infamous wives was Nama, the mother of King Rehoboam, 1 Kings 14 21. King Saul fought against the Ammonites, and King David had significant interactions with them, including both conflicts and diplomatic relations. The judge, Jephthah, delivered Israel from Ammonite oppression, Judges 11. Both the Moabites and Ammonites were subjects of prophetic judgments due to their opposition to Israel and their idolatrous practices. Prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel pronounced judgments against them, Isaiah 15 to 16, Jeremiah 48 to 49, Ezekiel 25, 1 to 11. Both the Moabites and Ammonites played significant roles in the biblical narrative, often as adversaries to Israel. Their interactions with Israel highlighted themes of enmity, coexistence, and the complex dynamics between neighboring nations in the ancient Near East. Their worship practices, particularly the veneration of Chemosh and Milcom, were often criticized in the biblical texts, reflecting the religious and cultural tensions of the time. The power of the Moabites and Ammonites waned with the rise of larger empires in the region. The Moabites eventually fell to the Babylonians around 582 BCE, after the conquest of Jerusalem. Moab's territory was overrun, and the people were assimilated into other cultures. Moab disappears from historical records after this period. The Ammonites similarly faced decline under Babylonian rule, and eventually became part of various empires, including the Persian and Greek empires. Like the Moabites, the Ammonites lost their distinct identity over time. Despite their decline, their legacy persisted in the biblical narrative and in archaeological discoveries that continue to shed light on their cultures and histories. The Moabites and Ammonites, though born out of a tragic and morally complex story, grew into significant nations that left an indelible mark on the history of the ancient Near East. Their interactions with Israel ranged from hostility to cooperation, reflecting the intricate web of relationships in the region. Understanding their stories helps us appreciate the rich tapestry of human history and the enduring legacy of these ancient peoples. If you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to like the video and share your thoughts in the comments. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more insightful biblical stories and explorations.